my presentation number 159 life is a series of monologues I mean I venture said to say life is nothing but a, a series of monologues this is going to be another yet another monologue in English oh excuse me monologues is is should be omitted so it is a monologue not monologues a monologue in English uh, so uh, let's see what do I mean by this uh, life is life is a m series of monologues uh, I have already talked about it I have already emphasized it again and again in one of my uh, previous videos in English uh, when I was talking about uh, Samuel Beckett and, uh, and his literature he in I think uh, I'm afraid I haven't, I haven't read uh, all of his works uh, I have only read uh, only uh, how much less than a half maybe one-fourth no a little more than that maybe th a third of his works I have read not all but I have a but I have the impression that he his works at least all the works that I have read are nothing but a, a series of monologues uh, all, all these works that I have read are are minimalistic uh, Samuel Beckett's Samuel for, for example uh, in his For example, uh, in his uh, in his novel, how it is, the pro uh, it is about uh, 150 pages long. It, it uh, there it, uh, in the novel uh, appears only f three or four people, people or beings animals I don't know it seems that they, they are they are human beings and uh, they are all of them are in the mud they are in mud <laughs> they swim <laughs> they crawl in the mud and this and uh, the only person that talks yeah there is only one person the protagonist who talks and uh, all the other all the other uh, all the other uh, um, characters th uh, are um, taciturn they, they they never talk and uh, this protagonist is the only person who talks and uh, he talks and talks and talks but uh, he talks and talks and talks. And, uh, it seems that he, this novel is nothing but a, mo a series of a long series of monologues. His monologues. Uh, in the end, at the end of the novel, he screams. He screams. He screams about how lonely he is in, in the mud. He, it seems as if uh, it is pitch dark. It is because the whole of his body is in the mud in the water in the muddy water and he can't see anything it is pitch dark and uh, it seems as if the the whole mud or the whole swamp contains contains uh, lo a lot of uh, human feces human stool because there seems to, there seems to be a, a lot millions perhaps millions of uh, human beings crawling in the mud and these human beings seem to uh, seem to uh, defecate in the mud 
<laughs> I'm sorry to be talking about such uh, such filth. <laughs> maybe some of you may be <laughs> eating or <laughs> something. I'm sorry, but uh, I'm talking about literature anyway, and uh, and uh, in this in this novel, <laughs> how it is, it is so uh, all these perhaps millions of people in the mud, millions of people or thousands uh, th thousands of people, I don't know. These 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 numerous people are cruelly crawling in the mud. And uh, when they defecate, they defecate into the mud, into the water, into the muddy water. So uh, the protagonist, as well as all the other uh, people in the mud, they they have to they have to keep crawling in the mud, in the pitch dark, uh, through the mud, through the muddy water, and through the human speci uh, feces too stool uh, and it's the protagonist keeps talking and talking and sometimes uh, only sometimes he he uh, meets somebody else in total he meets three people I'm not quite sure uh, two people two persons maybe so the protagonist, the protagonist seems to have interacted with with uh, with one person at first, and then after leaving him or or her, uh, he meets another person, and then he interacts interacts and uh, keeps in contact with that person, and then he leaves him again, and he goes on. All, al all alone, and in the end of the novel, at the end of the novel, he seems to realize that he is totally alone. He screams, but nobody answers. It seems as if the feeling, that the sensation that he had, that uh, there seemed numerous other people turned out to be false, turned out to be an illusion uh, after all. So so actually it may be that he he has always been totally alone. Not with so so perhaps perhaps he uh, perhaps he, uh, these other these two other people that he, the protagonist, seems to have interacted with, might have been nothing but an illusion. So he, he just felt that he felt as if he had interacted with these people, but actually these people might have been an illusion. So he might have been always alone all along. So he screams, somebody answer! He screams, but nobody answers. He screams and screams and many, uh, many times, but nobody answers. He's de desperate. And uh, the, the novel ends with his desperation. So, Although this novel is much too difficult for me to understand fully, actually, <laughs> who can ever understand this fully? I don't think I don't think anybody can. <laughs> but uh, I don't think it is that important to understand each word or each sentence. You just you can just feel it. I feel something, even though I understand only a little of this novel. And uh, Samuel Beckett himself says something about his uh, works, 
not only about this uh, particular novel but uh, about uh, about his works in general he says this Samuel Beckett says something like this along along these uh, along these lines he says uh, if you don't understand a work of mine a play or something don't take it too hard D don't worry you just feel it if you don't understand my work intellectually don't worry you just feel it by instinct by um, by feeling or something you just feel it and that's that's what it takes that's what it matters so you don't have to understand each word if you don't understand if you don't understand it intellectually okay that's okay you feel it if you feel something out of my work then that's okay that's what uh, Samuel Beckett says so uh, I don't uh, and besides I've always felt that way uh, uh, without uh, without uh, without him uh, having to say it uh, even though everybody says it is important to, to understand every word and so on and so forth I don't I wouldn't worry I uh, I just read it if I don't understand if I understand only only a, a little of it I don't worry because if I feel something then it's it's what it's all about isn't it so the the central the central subject the central theme of this work not only this work how it is but also all the other works of his are about loneliness total loneliness desperation not only loneliness but uh, I don't think uh, Samuel Beckett is talking merely about loneliness because because you have no lover or or family. No, he's not talking about that. Even if you are in the middle of a crowd, even if you are surrounded by a large family who love you, even even if you have ten decades. Uh, even if you have dozens of children, it doesn't matter. You might, you might still be lonely. Let me call, let me call it existential loneliness. And now comes my theme. Life is a series of monologues. What do, what do I exactly mean by this? Even if you are surrounded surrounded by a crowd who loves you, who adores you, even if you are a, you have a large family, favored with a lot of children, a lot of lovers who admire you, who understand, he who seems to under, who seem to understand you profoundly, you are still lonely. Why? Because even if those other people seem to understand you, they actually don't. Y even if even if you un seem to understand those other people, you actually don't. I, for example, I talk to you, pe pe to you, to to people out there, but I don't understand you any of you you don't understand me either therefore I engage I constantly engage in nothing but a series of monologues suppose I have a lover a beautiful one too who seems to be dedicated to me who seems to understand me but still does she or he? Okay, I'm his heterosexual, so uh, 
let's call call that person a she. She actually I don't I have no lover, but let me let's say suppose I have a lover, a beautiful one too. She even if, even though she may love me, even though she seems to love me and is dedica dedicated to me. Chances are that, ch not only chances are, but I am certain that she doesn't understand me. And I don't understand her, her either. None of my parents understand understands me either. Neither my, neither do my um, siblings. Even my brother, who, who is, perhaps, the most understanding person in the world about me. He seems to, he seems to be the person who is, who understands me most, most of all people. I have, nev I have never met any other person in the world who understands me better than my brother does. But still, my brother, I don't think he can ever get to understand me not more than a half of me anyway. Perhaps he only understands a tenth of me, or a, a hundredth of me, a, mil a millionth of me, maybe. So even the even the one who profoundly un seems to understand you, profoundly loves you, even that person. actually understands only one millionth of you. It doesn't matter whether he's clever, wise, or compassionate, or loving. He or she will never understand me. Not more than one millionth of me, anyway. This loneliness applies to each one of you, actually. You may say, oh, don't worry, you, you think too much. I have, I have some, several friends, at least one friend anyway, who is my best friend. He, he always understands me. And he, yeah, I, of course, um, I know that uh, nobody can understand each other more than a half or Maybe, maybe not completely, but uh, maybe 70%. We understand each other at a rate of 70%, maybe. Maybe you are 50%, but definitely not one millionth. But I dare say you are in an, in an illusion. Actually, we don't understand each other. So that's why I say life is life is a series of monologues. We engage. We actually we engage in our own monologues, just like just like uh, just like those characters, three characters in in this play. The play called Play. Yes, this play, this play uh, is about uh, ten pages long, maybe fifteen pages. Long. Let's say it's fifteen pages long. This play is called Play. It's funny, isn't it? Uh, and this called this this play called in this call in this play called Play. Uh, presents three three people. 
and uh, I have already talked about it uh, in, in one of my previous videos. Uh, but uh, let me repeat some of it. This is a this is a great play. Uh, so let me let me um, give you an outline of the play. Uh, in this play, uh, it begins with it begins with um, with a scene of uh, a huge mountain. On this huge mountain, there are three people. There are three urns, urns, uh, or uh, 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 like uh, urns. I mean. Uh, by urns, I mean uh, a huge, uh, like hu huge um, flower vases. These urn, in these urns, there yes, each of these urns contains one human being, and uh, each human being uh, sticks his or her head out. So uh, it's like this. So it is like this. On a hill, so thi this seems to be a purgatory. It looks like a purgatory or something. Uh, and uh, on a hill, there are three people, three urns. Th these are urns, and each urn contains a person. And this, in the center, there is a man. And this, this is a woman, his mistress, and this is another woman, his wife. And these people, these people are condemned to, f to have their f their uh, head fixed, headed in in a single direction. So they can't, they can't turn their heads like this. So even though they are. Even though they are uh, next to each other, they nobody no no none of them knows that these other people are there. So each person seems to be ignorant, to be unaware of the existence of others, the others, and uh, their eyes are hit. They are their eyes are fixed in one direction like this. They talk and talk rapidly, mechanically. They seem to be... They seem to be um, insane or something. They uh, look like... They look insane. They talk insanely. They talk and talk very rapidly, rapidly like... Uh, like an accelerated speech, just like uh, just like machines, they talk like machines, and each person seem to each person seems to talk about uh, their 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 experiences, their um, triangle triangular relationship experiences in the in the former life. So uh, the man the man talks about. His, his mistress and and uh, wife. He says he says that uh, when when he was having an affair with this uh, mistress, uh, the, his wife got jealous and said said this and that and so on and so forth. And this woman, this uh, mistress says when 
his man uh, appeared uh, and so on the, and uh, the wife uh, uh, follow, followed her and uh, screamed and so on and so forth and uh, the wife says uh, other things too so all these people talk about their own versions of uh, the, tri uh, the triangular relationship and they talk and talk and talk and they they don't they seem to be unaware of the other people and they talk and talk and then they seem to be to be repeating they seem to have been repeating uh, their their sequence of monologues uh, millions of times I mean they say things but uh, they seem to repeat the, the exact same things uh, millions of times so they are condemned to be they, they are condemned to um, talk and talk and talk they are condemned to talk and talk and talk about this exact about exactly the same thing for millions of years that that's what it seems it seems like and then at the end of the play it's only a 15 minute play so please have a look at it you will be ah yes ah, there are several several or maybe many maybe many many versions of uh, uh, I mean there are ma a lot of um, uh, drama companies have uh, performed this uh, play and uh, several several perf performances are on in uh, YouTube and I like I like uh, I like one of one of those uh, performances and that performance that performance I like is a movie version although it's a movie version it's not uh, it's not the rearranged version but uh, it's it's strictly it's uh, strictly uh, faithful to to the to the uh, written script uh, to the uh, it's faithful to to uh, Samuel Beckett's original play so don't worry uh, have a look at it it's it's the movie version with Alan Rickman as uh, as the hero Alan Rickman uh, the, the famous uh, actor uh, so the man, this man in the center, is played, uh, uh, performed by Alan Rickman. That version with Alan Rickman is really interesting, really, really impressive. I love it. I've I've seen it how many times? Maybe maybe ten times already. It's only fifteen minutes long, as I said before. And uh, this play, yes, at the end of the play, I forgot to mention that the, at the end of the play, uh, we, the audience, come to know that uh, these three people w are not alone. Actually, the uh, millions of other people seem to be uh, condemned to stay in their own urns and uh, there seem to be a lot of these hills a lot of these hills uh, with a lot of these urns containing a lot of those th these uh, uh, people and all these people each seem to to be repeating the same things forever and ever and ever in this huge purgatory that's what it seems that's what I understand from that uh, play and this this play evokes nothing but a feeling of existential loneliness that is in other words the fact that uh, each one of us is condemned to be 
condemned to uh, total loneliness in which everybody has nothing but has nothing to do but uh, to engage in a long lifetime series of monologues like like I have I have been doing here or on YouTube everybody else is the same is in everybody else has been doing the same thing that I have been doing here I am talking to myself I uh, pretend to be talking to you guys on at the other end of the internet but actually it may be that uh, nobody there may be nobody at the other end actually I have very few followers and even if even if even if some of you have a huge followers a huge um, following for example millions of yeah some some youtubers are beautiful or persuasive so uh, and uh, entertaining so uh, they seem to have millions of followers but uh, do these millions of followers really understand those youtubers do you really really believe that these youtubers are not alone I venture to say that each of these each of these uh, youtubers as well as I are all everybody is actually engaged in nothing but monologues no nobody ever understands never uh, nobody ever gets to understand each other that's what I believe here I may be pessimistic I may sound pessimistic but this is a fact I'm not stating an opinion this is nothing but the but the fact the fact so we we've got to face the fact that we are completely alone and after that only after that can we make another move make a new move actually I feel now that I am 62 I think I am relieved that about the fact that uh, I am completely alone yes I am completely alone yes I know that uh, I am aware that uh, nobody gets to understand me ne neither neither do I I don't get to understand anybody else either if I do understand any of them if uh, I only understand one millionth of each one of them if anybody else gets to understand me then it's only one millionth of me that they can understand that's what I believe and uh, this is what I believe Samuel Beckett seems to have been saying in his works all these all his works are that way waiting for Godot this hilarious play too seem, seem, seems to seems to well. be asserting that too here now in Japan this evening the evening has come it's getting darker and darker
So today, I, so uh, for now, let me let me uh, stop it here, and uh, I'll get back to you in a new video pretty soon. Thank you.